So, let's move on from the woodpecker's brain to ours. The funny side of science has a lot to tell us about the complexity of human psychology. Only it could ask this burning question. What effect does the urgent need to urinate have on our decision-making ability? Thank you. In our research, we examine whether a physiological form of control, bladder control, uh, can also facilitate behavioral control. This suggests that uh, neurological control signals are task-unspecific, which has important implications for impulse control. Thank you. Let's put it more simply. Everyone knows that stores cunningly present little items such as candy and chewing gum at the checkout, where customers buy them without thinking. Marketing specialists call this kind of purchase impulse buying. Well, what Miriam Took and her colleagues have discovered is that if you badly need to visit the bathroom, you no longer buy the little items at the checkout. The fuller your bladder, the less impulsive you are. So what's behind this strange fact? Paris, Place de la Sorbonne. Just around the corner from the ancient Temple of Learning, this is the research centre of INSEAD, the European Institute of Business Administration. We're going to reenact Miriam Tuke's experiment with the help of six young volunteers, three young men and three young women. 1.10 p.m. Everybody takes their place in the test room. The moderator tells them that they're going to taste different brands of mineral water and give their opinion. Nobody can leave the room during the test. One thirty p.m. Everybody drinks, but look carefully. The group on the left has to drink the whole glass of water, while the group on the right must only drink a small quantity. They start again with glass B. Then glass C. And the last glass. One forty-five p.m. It'll take 40 minutes for the water to take effect. For now, the volunteers are given unimportant tasks to carry out. The only aim is to give their bladders time to fill up. Remember that the people on the left have drunk about a litre of water compared to a few mouthfuls on the right. 2.10 p.m. 25 minutes have gone by. The right-hand group is working normally, but there are some signs of discomfort on the left. Two twenty p.m. Thirty-five minutes have gone by. The people on the left are getting rather agitated. Some furtively shift their posture. Two thirty p.m. Forty minutes have passed. There's a sense of urgency on the left. The water has made it through the kidneys and is now distending the bladder. One young man can't wait any longer and asks if he can go. He's out of luck. The unfortunates on the left have no choice but to grit their teeth. Fight the urge to urinate, master it and control it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Now comes the real ordeal. Each one is given a choice. They can get 10 euros tomorrow or 12 euros in 25 days, 67 euros tomorrow or 85 in 70 days. The basic idea is very simple. It would be the same with millions at stake. You can ask for the money at once or you can wait and get more. The aim is to test their individual capacity to resist their initial impulse to take the money and run. In the last questionnaire, each participant has to assess their need to go to the bathroom on a scale of one to seven. Once the experiment's over, it's time for the conclusions. For this task, we counted the number of times that people preferred this later but larger reward instead of the smaller, sooner reward. 
And here you can see that people who have to urinate more urgently actually choose more often for the later but larger reward. And this suggests that even in the domain of financial decision making, uh, bladder control facilitates the ability to inhibit your tendency to go for an immediate reward, but facilitates the ability to go for a later but larger reward instead. The conclusion is, provide lavatories at the entrance to your store if you want your shoppers to impulse buy. But more seriously, bladder control activates an area of the brain that apparently enables greater self-restraint in every part of life. And when this area is activated, uh, because one act of control is required, it unintentionally facilitates control in various other domains. And these findings suggest that people possess one general inhibitory network. This theory was a little unexpectedly confirmed in the world of politics. Not long after we presented this prize, there was uh, an item in the news from England that the Prime Minister, David Cameron, apparently has been telling people that he uses this idea of filling your bladder as a piece of strategy. He feels that he's able to negotiate more forcefully under better control if he fills his bladder. I don't know where he got this idea from, but it perfectly matches with my findings, so I think there is a real scientific basis for his uh, behavior. Do you think it works? Yes. There's a downside, though. The team who jointly received this Ig Nobel Prize for Medicine, led by American neurologist Peter Snyder, discovered that people's decision-making gets worse and worse when they need to pee too badly. These impairments were the same, actually, as staying awake for 24 hours or if you reach the legal limit for driving at a bar. Why this relationship between thinking and peeing? Ah. When you gotta go, you gotta go. Sadly, the speech was curtailed by Miss Sweetie Poo, the little girl tasked with interrupting speeches that go on a little too long during the ceremony. Never mind, we found out that the funny side of science may have added a psychophysiological chapter to Sigmund Freud's theory of repression.